Knowing what to do when you get to Disney World is important, but knowing what to do before you get to Disney World is critical. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're not simply going to show you all of the different Disney World things you're going to need to plan ahead for. Instead, we're going to show you the things you need to plan ahead for that can super easily slip through the planning cracks if you're not careful. These planning tips should not be taken lightly because if you forget about them, you might find yourself accidentally running into a situation that puts a major damper on your trip or even getting a bad case of FOMO, though you're already inside the Disney parks. It happens. But the best part about today's tips and tricks, you can get them all smoothed out back home before you even step foot onto Disney World property. First up, let's talk about something we don't ever talk about. This is super important. Just because you're on vacation does not mean you're invincible. So to cut to the chase, make sure all of your important prescriptions are up to date before you arrive at your resort. Not only that, but make sure you have copies of your prescriptions, just in case there's an emergency. Say for instance, your luggage gets lost on a flight and you only had your medication in that specific piece of luggage. Or if you find yourself at one of the parks and realize you left your prescriptions all the way back at the hotel, then you're gonna be awfully relieved to have a backup supply in your fanny pack or your park bag. But if you do need a prescription delivered to you while you're in the Disney bubble, just turn to your handy dandy My Disney Experience app for the answers. Emergency room resources, urgent care and virtual care, a care concierge call center, and prescription delivery are all all in there. If you don't use this service, drugstores like Walgreens and CVS are only a few miles away from Disney World, so you can always drive over or take a ride share to one of these locations if you need to. But if you get this all situated before your trip, you're not going to waste the time and you're not going to put yourself in a potentially precarious situation. Even if you're not taking any sort of prescription drugs, you still need to make sure you pack those over-the-counter drugs that you know work best for you. Because you never know when a headache, a stomach ache, major cramping, or incessant case of the sneezes is going to threaten to mess up your expensive park day. So it's best to have those meds on hand at all times just in case. If you forget any of these and happen to need them ASAP, you can always purchase a selection of over-the-counter drugs through the Disney Resort gift shops, but the prices will be inflated because Disney. So it's better to bring them from home if you really think you're going to need them. First aid centers are also available in each of the Disney World theme parks and water parks too. You can find the closest first aid center on the real-time map in your My Disney Experience app. These first aid centers can help if a member of your family gets sick or dehydrated or experiences a minor injury while you're in the park. They're also able to provide over-the-counter medication and bandages and other quick remedies to help you get back on your feet and into the parks again. Next thing you will forget before you go to Disney World, learning about the real Genie Plus offerings. Now, I don't know what you know when it comes to Genie Plus, but here are the three things I want you to for sure know before you make that day of purchase. First, Genie Plus will allow you to select one lightning lane at a time for rides and attractions so that you can bypass those massive queues in exchange for shorter ones. Two, you can purchase Genie Plus each day starting at midnight for a surge price that typically ranges between $15 and $29 per person, depending on the season. But you won't be able to start booking lightning lanes until 7 a.m. And three, not every ride and attraction will have lightning lanes included with your Genie Plus purchase. Did you catch that last point? Not every ride and attraction is included with Genie Plus. So let's take a look at what experiences specifically are going to be excluded here so you're not caught off guard when you get into the parks. There are some rides that do not have lightning lanes at all, including Astro Orbiter, Liberty Square Riverboat, Prince Charming Regal Carousel, Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover, and Walt Disney World Railroad and Magic Kingdom. Grand Fiesta Tour starring the Three Caballeros in Epcot, Triceratops Spin and the Wildlife Express Train in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Several park shows and experiences also do not have lightning lanes. But there are some that do, including popular options like a reserved area for the Festival of Fantasy Parade at Magic Kingdom, Turtle Talk with Crush at Epcot, Beauty and the Beast live on stage at Hollywood Studios, Festival of the Lion King at Animal Kingdom, and lots of others, which you can find listed on our Disney Genie, Genie Plus, and Lightning Lanes catch-all page on the DFB website. I'll link that down in the description for you. Along with some attractions that are missing lightning lanes entirely, there are other rides that do have lightning lanes, but you won't be able to access them through the standard Genie Plus purchase. Instead, the newest and most popular Disney rides will be pay per ride, meaning you'll have to buy an individual lightning lane for them that's separate from the Genie Plus lineup. These individual Lightning Lane attractions include Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Tron Light Cycle Run in Magic Kingdom, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Epcot, Rise of the Resistance in Hollywood Studios, and Flight of Passage in Animal Kingdom. What gets even more confusing is that Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy 
only have a virtual queue in addition to their individual lightning lane, whereas the others do have a standby line as well. All this to say, do your research ahead of time and learn about each park's Genie Plus offerings. That way you'll know for sure whether a Genie Plus purchase is really gonna be worth the cost or not. Also keep in mind you can pick and choose which parks you get Genie Plus for. You don't have to get it for every single day of your trip. If you'd rather get Genie Plus for your Magic Kingdom day and your Hollywood Studios day, which tend to give you the most bang for your buck with those Genie Plus purchases, but skip buying it on your Epcot day and your Animal Kingdom day, that's your call. Now, you might have budgeted money for your vacation, but have you budgeted space? By the end of your best trip ever, you might have noticed that your stuff has started to, I don't know, expand. That could be because you blacked out at one of the gift shops and purchased more souvenirs than you anticipated, or it could be because you just don't pack nearly as well at the end of your trip versus at the beginning. I, for one, will do a fabulous job of packing my outfits nice and neat back home, but as soon as it's time for me to leave my hotel room, organization and folding goes right out the window and I just shove it all back in. <laughs> this is when a collapsible duffel bag can come in really handy. Collapsible duffel bags can stay all folded and compact at the start of your trip, but when you need some extra luggage space, it can come out of hiding and help you carry your suspiciously growing pile of stuff. These packable duffel bags can be found on sites like Amazon for around $15 to $40, depending on the style and ruggedness you're looking for, or what other extra goodies it comes with, like an extra bag or two. Now, I have used my collapsible duffel bag many times to actually check luggage, and it's always been just fine. But if you have your own experiences, please let us know in the comments. Next thing that could slip through the cracks before your Disney World trip is booking a table for a brand new restaurant that's opening before you go. Picture this, you're visiting Disney's Hollywood Studios and you book a reservation for 50's Primetime Cafe, a place your family has always enjoyed in the past. But when you get to Hollywood Studios, you suddenly remember Roundup Rodeo Barbecue officially opened on March 23rd and your kids absolutely love all things Toy Story. Did you drop the ball? Well, you won't, because I'm gonna fill you in right now on every restaurant that's recently opened in Disney World during these past several months, just to make sure you don't accidentally miss out on a potentially new favorite. Since I threw Roundup Rodeo Barbecue under the bus first, let's start with that guy. Roundup Rodeo is a table service restaurant themed completely around Woody's Roundup gang, though you'll still see the other familiar faces like Trixie and Forky and the Little Green Aliens. This is a family-style dining experience, meaning the all-you-care-to-enjoy barbecue fare will be delivered straight to your table for the whole family to share. You'll definitely need an advanced dining reservation for this one since it's going to be a rather popular one for the kids who will be thrilled to see all the different colors and characters and all-around excitement going on around the dining room. Advanced dining reservations can be made 60 days before your trip through the Disney World website or My Disney Experience app. And another table service restaurant that lots of folks don't even know exists yet is Rosa Mexicano over at the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin. This is an elevated fiesta dining experience, which includes signature menu items like burrilla quesa tacos, sweet corn esquites, and roasted chicken suizas, as well as award-winning margaritas. At the moment, you can only make advanced reservations for Rosa Mexicano through the Open Table website, not through the Disney World one. But we'll let you know if that ever changes in the future. It probably will. Otherwise, all availability is first come, first served. And yes, this is the Rosa Mexicano that you have tried in other metropolises around the country and loved. But the new restaurants don't stop there. There are other new options on the horizon set to open later in 2023. The Summer House on the Lake is a new table service with an additional cookie jar bakery area for some sweet goodies to go along with your pizza and sandwiches and pastas. And the idyllic Tea Love and Cake Bake Shop by Gwendolyn Rogers is in progress at the Boardwalk. You can read more about what to expect from this one by reading our interview with the Gwendolyn Rogers herself, which I'll link down in the description below. Rest assured, if there's a new restaurant coming up on the Disney scene, we're going to be there to give it a taste and report back to you on our findings. In fact, with both of the upcoming restaurants I just listed, we've actually cheated and tried them before they opened in Disney. We just couldn't help ourselves. Both Summer House on the Lake and the Cake Bake Shop have other locations that we jumped the gun with, but now we can give you an even better idea for what to expect from these new table service locations when they do open in Disney World. So if you want to read up on our first impressions before the soon-to-be restaurants even open, then we'll link those reviews down in the description for you too. Happy reading. Next thing to be aware of before you go to Disney World, park hours and restaurant hours do not necessarily correspond to each other. Disney World restaurants dance to the beat of their own drums. While some do open and close at the same times of the parks, others open and close before the parks or open and close after the parks. And some restaurants may not even open at all, except for when they feel it's absolutely necessary. Let me give you a few examples so you can see what I mean. 
Breakfast sit-down restaurants like Cinderella's Royal Table and the Crystal Palace at Magic Kingdom actually open before the park does, which is usually at 9 a.m. So if you can get reservations right at 8 a.m. when these restaurants open, you can actually enter Magic Kingdom before even the early theme park entry folks, which will let you stroll down a practically empty Main Street USA and grab a few pictures in front of Cinderella Castle before everyone else is allowed in. It's wild. Several Epcot Festival food booths, on the other hand, might close 30 minutes to an hour before the park does, especially if they're running low on product by the end of the day. So if there's a certain item you know you're going to want to try during the festival, don't wait until the last bit of the day to try it. And speaking of Epcot restaurants being finicky, many of the World Showcase restaurants and festival food booths themselves won't officially open until 11 a.m. or even 11.30, even though the park usually opens two hours before that. However, there are a few World Showcase breakfast locations out there that you can still take advantage of right at 9 a.m., like Les Halles Boulangerie Patisserie in the France Pavilion, and Kringla Bakery Og Cafe in the Norway Pavilion, and those Joffrey's Kiosk locations, too. So that's super confusing. It's good to study up beforehand so you don't try to go someplace that's not going to open for another two hours. Meanwhile, back in Magic Kingdom, you can still mobile order to pick up snacks and treats from Main Street USA locations, like Casey's Corner and Main Street Confectionery, for up to another hour after the park officially closes, meaning you can mobile order yourself a snack, schedule it for pickup after the park closes, and take a seat somewhere along Main Street USA as you wait out the massive crowds flooding toward the bus stops post-fireworks. Okay, one more example and then I'll wrap up this point. Epcot's pizza window in the Italy Pavilion called Pizza El Taglio usually only opens during busier times of the year when Disney needs the extra food locations to feed that influx of guests. Same goes for other theme park food kiosks and quick services like Caravan Road in Disney's Animal Kingdom, Dinosaur Gertie's Ice Cream of Extinction in Hollywood Studios, Tomorrowland Terrace in Magic Kingdom, and sometimes Tortuga Tavern as well in Magic Kingdom. If you want to learn more about which Disney restaurants are only open during certain times of the year and which ones are open all year round, as well as find out all the updated opening and closing times for every single Disney World restaurant out there, check out our 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining, now live on the dfbstore.com website. It's a digital guide that's got all the different food updates you're looking for, so make sure to download your copy and type in code YouTube for some extra savings on your purchase. It doesn't matter whether you've bought state-of-the-art park shoes with the best arch support, the best water resistance, and the best quality material. If those shoes are brand spanking new, they're gonna hurt. No hard feelings against your new shoes or anything, but they're gonna be stiff and awkward because they haven't been broken in yet, meaning they're more likely to rub your heel the wrong way or just not be very breathable. We've all done this with a nice pair of sandals before with brands that were highly recommended to us by friends who've gone to Disney World with these many times. But if you take them straight into the parks, your pinky toes are gonna hate you by the end of those park days. But after you've had those sandals for a couple of years, they work great in the parks. So if you do get new shoes for Disney, make sure to wear them out and about first before your trip. Wear them as you walk around the block or shop at the grocery store or go to your office buildings with five flights of stairs. As long as you've helped these sneakers or sandals get past that initial awkward and new stage, you should be good to go. Now we've said it before, we're gonna say it again. Figure out my Disney experience before you go to Disney World. You may have heard in passing you should download that My Disney Experience app for your big Disney trip, but I'd take it one step further. You should download the My Disney Experience app as soon as you know you're going to Disney World, before you even get the chance to buy any park tickets or hotel rooms. The My Disney Experience app is becoming more and more of an essential planning tool, but if you don't know all its services, you're going to miss out. Take, for instance, the two newest coasters of the parks, Tron Light Cycle Run and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. These are two rides that are practically impossible to ride if you don't have the My Disney Experience app downloaded. And that's because the My Disney Experience app is how you're going to get into these rides' virtual queues, or at least it's the easiest way to do it. Virtual queues go live on the app twice daily, once at 7 a.m., once at 1 p.m., sharp. There's also a third virtual queue drop at 6 p.m. for those who are staying in either park for its extended evening hours. Those are exclusive to deluxe resort guests only. Along with virtual queues, the My Disney Experience app is also where you're going to find live Lots more amenities and services that you'll use daily in Disney World. Can you still go to Disney World and not use the My Disney Experience app? Sure, but you'll be at a major disadvantage compared to all those who are using it. So what I recommend is downloading the app, making your My Disney Experience profile, and studying up on all the different features this app can hold. You'll also need to create profiles for everyone in your travel group and make sure each profile is linked under one account so you can make all your trips reservations for every group member at the same time. Here's how it's done. 
First, tap on that hamburger shaped menu button and scroll down to the section that says My Profile. From there, switch from your profile tab and over to the family and friends list. This is where you'll be able to add other guests' profiles, so go ahead and tap the plus symbol next to the Add a Guest option. This is when you'll receive three different linking methods. Option one, you can add a guest from your already connected guest list that you linked for previous Disney trips. All you have to do is tap on the little box next to their name and add them to your party. Option two, you can manually enter the name and age of the guests in your party, which is a good option for younger members who won't be old enough to make their own My Disney Experience accounts yet. Or option three, you can scan a linking code, which will allow you to connect your My Disney profile to your friend's already existing My Disney profile. To pull up someone's linking code, you'll need to go back to the My Profile section and scroll down to the bottom of your list of options. There, you're gonna find the Show My Linking Code tab, which will bring up your personal QR code. If someone's not close enough to scan a QR code with their phone, you'll also receive a manual code right underneath that can be typed instead of scanned. These codes will expire every 30 minutes, but you can always pull up a new one if need be. And the more you study up, the more comfortable you're going to be with the virtual queue procedure, the lightning lane selections, and all of that before you have to use them on the day of your visit. Now, the My Disney Experience app isn't the only app that's going to come in handy during your Disney World vacation. There are five other types of apps you're going to want to have on your phone before your trip to make your vacation life that much more convenient. First is those rideshare apps. When you don't want to fully rely on the Disney buses to get you to a dining reservation on time, it's nice to have those premium rideshares like Lyft and Uber as a solid plan B. The Lyft app is also where you're going to be able to book the minivans, which are Disney's own rideshare service that gives you a private ride around property and also provides car seats when needed. You might also want some food delivery apps like Grubhub and DoorDash and Uber Eats. They can bring fast and cheap food from outside the Disney bubble to your Disney hotel. Just keep in mind that your food delivery driver won't be able to drop your meal off at your hotel room door. That's not really safe. So you'll need to pick it up from Bell Services once it arrives. And those grocery delivery apps. If you're staying in a room that has a kitchen, like one of the villas or Fort Wilderness cabins, and you decide you want to cook a few meals from your room instead of going out to eat every night, or you want some granola bars and trail mix and stuff you can take into the parks, you may want to have some groceries delivered to your hotel. And that's why these grocery delivery apps like Instacart can be very, very nice. This is also a great way to pick up any last minute supplies and toiletries you might have forgotten to pack beforehand. Much like the food delivery apps though, you will need to pick up your grocery orders from Bell Services. Now you definitely also want a reliable weather app. Several apps won't just tell you the average high and low temps for the day, they'll also tell you about those hourly forecasts and minute by minute forecasts, and when you can prepare to see stormy skies during your trip. This can help you adjust your itinerary as needed, so you can focus on more of those indoor park activities as you're waiting for the showers to pass you by. And these apps are good to have before your trip as well because some of the extended forecasts can be pretty on the nose and then you know what types of outfits you need to be packing for maximum park comfort. And the My Disney Experience app isn't the only free Disney app made for you. The Play Disney Park app allows you to interact in different areas and ride queues and helps pass the time as you wait for certain attractions. But one of the coolest features you can access through this is the Star Wars data pad, which you can use around Galaxy's Edge. This data pad is gonna let you do fun extra side quests around the planet of Batu, like hack into technology, collect cargo, translate Orabesh, and eavesdrop on nearby top secret conversations. Next up, think advance reservations are only for the Disney restaurants? Think again, there are several premium experiences around Disney World that are incredibly popular that you're gonna need to make reservations for before your trip. These are very easy to forget about, by the way. For example, there's a brand new Tron experience over at the reimagined Tomorrowland Light and Power Co. Now it's the Tomorrowland Launch Depot and it's a Tron experience inside that shop called the Tron Identity Program. That's gonna let you customize a program action figure that looks and sounds like you. This one is 89 bucks. Over in Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios, you'll need reservations to customize your own high quality lightsabers over at Savi's Workshop and fully functioning droids at the Droid Depot. Savi's lets you design your own lightsaber in an ultra immersive Star Wars experience, takes about 20 to 30 minutes, but be prepared to shell out big bucks because a single lightsaber with an included case is gonna cost you $249.99 plus tax. Droid Depot, on the other hand, is like a robo Build-A-Bear set within an industrial workshop. You can choose between three basic droid models, and one of these little buddies is gonna cost you at least $119.99 and includes a remote and carrying case. 
Okay, this next warning is becoming more and more and more critical as we get into the very popular spring break season here. Don't trust Genie Plus to stick around. If you want to rely on Genie Plus and individual lightning lanes to help you navigate around those massive Disney World ride lines, make sure you purchase as soon as possible, especially if you plan on hitting up the parks during those peak season times. Instead of telling you why this is the best plan of attack, let me show you by taking you back to one of the starting weeks of spring break this year, so you can see how popular the lightning lanes have become. On March 13th, Flight of Passage was completely sold out by 8.30 a.m. On March 15th, Genie Plus as a whole was sold out by 3 p.m., as were all the individual lightning lanes. On March 16th, all individual lightning lanes were sold out by 9.40 a.m., and on March 17th, they were sold out by 2.30 p.m. So safe to say the earlier you can purchase these lightning lanes, the better off you're going to be. Like we talked about earlier, Genie Plus can be added to your ticket as early as midnight on the day of your visit, even though the first round of lightning lane reservations won't go live until 7 a.m. However, when it comes to individual lightning lanes, you can start purchasing those as early as 7 a.m. if and only if you're staying at one of the Disney-owned hotels. Otherwise, you won't be able to purchase your first individual lightning lane until the parks officially open for the day which could be too late in some cases. So when you're trying to decide what hotel you're gonna book for your trip, think about whether or not you're planning on using individual lightning lanes, because if you are, you're gonna have a better chance of actually getting them during those busier seasons if you're staying at a Disney World resort, rather than if you're staying someplace else. Now, speaking of hotels, lots of Disney World's hotels are going through some big time changes right now, and we wanna talk about that for you. Cause choosing where you stay is going to affect everything else about your Disney World trip. So Disney's Polynesian Village Resort has been under some serious construction for a while now, as its brand new Disney Vacation Club villas are currently being built. These new villas won't be ready for guests until late 2024, so expect to see tons of construction work to continuously be happening near that part of the resort. By the way, that's the part of the resort that's closest to the Grand Floridian. This shouldn't impact your stay too much, but it will make things a little less picturesque, and if you come back for a quick cat nap in the afternoon, you might hear some construction noises depending on where your room is located. Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge is refurbishing the Kidani Village area, and that's gonna continue until September 2023, so same rules apply. If you're here during your stay, you may very well hear a construction site ruckus. Disney's Caribbean Beach is getting ready to open its new Little Mermaid themed rooms later in 2023. Disney gave guests a sneak peek at these Ariel inspired home away from homes at the end of last year. And they're looking fantastic with their under the sea artwork and fresh pastel paint job. These rooms will also include a fifth sleeper bed to accommodate more guests, which is definitely an upgrade from the former pirate themed rooms that used to be here, which only slept four. Grand Floridian is experiencing tons of construction as it freshens up its lobby and guest rooms. And because of of all this construction, the walkway between Grand Floridian and Magic Kingdom is currently closed, but should reopen later this spring. During this time, the walkway from the Polynesian Village Resort will also be closed. But don't worry, there are a few other ways to get from your hotel to Magic Kingdom. The boats will still be running, as will the iconic monorail. And let's not forget all the construction still happening at Disney's Boardwalk. Currently, the Cake Bake Shop is being worked on where the old ESPN club used to be, and the lobby and rooms of the resort are also experiencing extreme makeovers, meaning certain areas may or may not be open if you plan on staying at this hotel in the near future. Always check on a resort's main page on the Disney World website for the most recent construction updates before you book a room at any particular location. And something else that a lot of people don't think about before their trip, but definitely think about it once they get there, is planning for a Disney World day at one of the water parks like Blizzard Beach or Typhoon Lagoon, and then the temperature drops below 50 and closes down those parks. From January to April, Orlando can definitely experience some chilly days. Though the afternoons more than likely will heat up for you, the mornings and evenings can be brutal. If you see that things are gonna be chilly while you're vacationing, it's probably best to hold off on the water park tickets this time around. But if you do end up buying them, you do not need a park pass reservation for either water park. So if need be, you can just choose a different day during your trip that might be a bit warmer for your water park adventures, as long as it doesn't clash with one of your other theme park days, of course. Now, water park tickets are not refundable, but they won't expire until the end of the year. 
So if you plan on heading back to Orlando later on and you don't get to use your water park tickets the first go around, you can still use them during trip number two if you happen to go back. As far as the regular theme parks are concerned, pack the layers. For real, layers have saved my hide on multiple occasions. In the middle of the day, you might be totally cool with rocking your quick dry shorts and t-shirt, but at night, you'll be awfully thankful for the jacket, sweatpants, woolly socks, ear warmers, scarves, and or gloves that you have stowed away in your park bag. Cause Disney charges a lot of money if you want to buy that stuff in the park. So Disney World can be a blast when you're not constantly stressing over whether you've forgotten to do something important or not. So getting all these details situated well in advance is going to help you leave your worries at the door and just enjoy this trip of a lifetime with your friends and family. But if you're looking for even more tips, especially as you get closer and closer to the time frame of your trip, keep coming back here and we'll keep shoveling the latest Disney World info and planning advice your way. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.